Today, I'm proud to share a very special, very personal announcement. My video editor and I are adding a little one to our lives. That's right, my gaming PC and I are having a tiny gaming PC. This is the Megalith, and she's more than just a glorious rig. She's my beloved life partner. Sorry, Brooke, your FPS is just too low. Thanks to you, dear viewer, the Megalith has been working non-stop these last three months modeling projects and cutting videos. As a tribute to her hard work, we're gonna scale this classy lady down by 75% and build the cutest little baby PC. Ah! But wouldn't you know, a bunch of douche blasters already built tiny PCs, and my viewers deserve nothing less than a truly innovative content style experience. So today, we're building an entire tiny battle station, complete with tiny monitor, tiny peripherals, and a tiny desktop atop a tiny desk. So let's fire up Fusion 360 and start ripping off the first thing I see the monitor. You can tell it's a gaming monitor because it's black, red, and edgy. We are going to copy its dark and brooding aesthetics, but scale it all down to fit this tiny 5-inch LCD. We're just going to make an adorable tiny monitor. Uh, I started by modeling the monitor's bezel and scaled it down by about, you know, 81.4%-ish. The touchscreen isn't going to work anymore because it communicates with the Pi through the GPIO header, but that's alright because we're, of course, going to add a tiny keyboard and a tiny mouse. Here's how this works. The LCD panel nestles into the bezel and this backplate locks it in with four screws and captive nuts. My most intellectual commenters have tactfully notified me that the prints from my top 10 tools video look like stringy poo poo butt. And I'm tired of explaining that this is not my printer, it's the time lapse software. I decided to eliminate these boogers once and for all by adding a sacrificial booger sucking wipe tower, which is an excellent nickname for anti maskers, to the plate. It turns out that the bond between a half inch thick cylinder of bootleg polycarbonate and a PEI build plate is a fickle one easily broken. I had to pull a tactical retreat, print just the upper part, and make some little sleeves to help glue the two halves together. These little red feet complete the look and make this a, oh my god, just hyper cute, perfect copy of my gaming monitor. But this won't do. This desk is far too big for this adorable bastard. A tiny battle station needs a tiny desk. To the wood shop! Voidstar Lab is based out of my hackerspace, the Fat Cat Fab Lab. Problem is, attendance is way down because of the Rona, but the rent isn't. The Fab Lab really needs help keeping the lights on, and if you have a few bucks to spare, a small donation would make a tremendous difference. If you're in the NYC area, apply for a sponsored membership, which is free to you, but earns us grant money. Links for both are in the description. If the Fab Lab shuts down, Voidstar Lab is going to go with it, so a donation to them is as good as a donation to me. Anyways. Tiny desk. I'm not a great carpenter, but now I have a little woodworking. This mini desk is way higher quality than my real desk, which I bought for $40 at Ikea and is literally buckling under the megalith's girth. Adorable mini monitor, meet lovable mini desk. Next up is the tiny mouse. I grabbed an old Magic the Gathering playmat, never gonna use that again in the United Plague of America. I'm gonna cut out a mini mouse mat. Then I printed a teeny tiny replica of my mouse bungee, which is tool number 10 in my top 10 list of 3D printable tools. Link in the pop-up right there. I just bought the mouse. A tiny mouse needs a tiny keyboard. My daily driver is an Ergodox Infinity, which looks all badass and hackery, but it, it's really just a regular keyboard split into two ergonomic halves. Closest thing I could find was this home theater PC remote. It's ortholinear and it has two thumb boards, but it's technically not a split keyboard. Till I got to it. I designed a 3D printed frame for each half, painstakingly spliced all 20 of those so rudely severed connections together. Wrapped it in some cable wrap, printed some strain relief out of flexible TPU, and there we go. The world's first miniature ergodox. We have tiny peripherals and tiny furniture to put it on. It's time to turn to the business end of this build, the tiny gaming PC. I'm going to call this project the Cockolith, which is a microscopic plate of rock formed by single-celled algae. They arrange them into a tiny suit of armor called a Cocosphere. It's all going to begin with the pie. The heart of the Cockolith is the Raspberry Pi 4, in part because it's actually quite capable for playing games, but mostly because vidIQ told me that Raspberry Pi 4 is a high value keyword. I bought the 2GB version because I'm a cheapskate. I bought a chunky heatsink that makes the Pi look a lot like my motherboard and will also help shed the inevitable inferno when we redline this thing. When you're designing a small project, it's really important to plan not only how it's going to look, but how you're going to put it together, right down to the fasteners. 
With so little wiggle room, it's really easy to paint yourself into a corner where you can't maneuver a part into place or get an Allen key onto a, a screw. I printed the main chassis and more of that fake carbon, fake polycarbonate. The wee little feet are printed in classy black silk PLA, and I, I just glued those on. I laser cut little windows out of acrylic with this slate green tint that makes it look like tempered glass. Unlike in a real computer, we don't have enough room to route wires after the fact, so we have to be methodical. First, we apply our thermal pads. We're gonna plug the cables into the Pi. We do not forget the pre-programmed SD card. We mount the Pi and the heat sink to the case. That's the lowest layer done. Next up is dealing with the heat. Like the Megalith, the Cockalith will have five intake fans, and even the fans are cute and tiny. <laughs> Life is too short to make you watch me tighten 20 screws, so let's finish the job Instagram style. How whimsical was that? Next up is the graphics cards. I am using scare quotes because these are not really graphics cards. The Raspberry Pi basically already is a graphics card. The Cockalist Teensy SLI setup is a pair of Teensy microcontrollers. The top TNC 3.2 drives the status display and controls the fans. The bottom TNC does exactly what my bottom graphics card does. Absolutely nothing. I really take pride in the Megalith liquid cooling system. As desperately as I would love to put a tiny liquid cooling system in the Cockalith, tiny pumps and tiny radiators are nowhere to be found. Instead, I mounted these radiator looking shrouds over the fans and I bent some fluorescent acrylic into bogus water cooling. Last part is the case modding. The Megalith's case, Megalith, Megalith's, it's Megalith. The Megalith's case has notoriously bad airflow through the front and top panels. To keep that machine from imploding, I had to carve holes with the angle grinder so I could mount these laser cut acrylic grills. What, you think I have a water jet? Or a friend with a water jet? Or a friend? Well this time, I can design the grill right into the Cockalith shrouds. The Megalith is wrapped in unconvincing fake carbon fiber vinyl, so I set the slicer to put Hilbert Curve infill in the top and bottom layers of my own panels, which actually makes a pretty convincing imitation of imitation carbon fiber. It's a fake of a fake. Baudrillard's rotting corpse approves. I stuck some magnets on the panels so I could just slap them in place. Apart from the built-in status light on the motherboard, the Megalith has no RGB anything. It is illuminated in 100% old school cold cathode fluorescent black lights. Nothing fakes fluorescent lights like electroluminescent wire, which phosphoresces when you pass 120 volts AC through it, and they will give you a nasty shock. Nope. I'm not gonna zap myself on film for your amusement. I'm not a lecture boom. Anyways, I formed the EL wire into these super cute mini black lights and I tucked the high voltage driver under the divider. I think this looks pretty convincing. Finally, the Megalith has a custom vacuum fluorescent status display that runs on, you guessed it, Teensy. This thing shows heat, load, and memory use, and when I reboot the computer, it even scrolls through randomly generated status lines. I salvaged this VFD from an industrial HVAC controller, but the cute little baby version is going to use one of those super small OLED displays that I have left over from the Among Us card swipe project. I will need to gather the info from like nine different command line utilities that all need to be individually parsed with regexes, and screw that, I'm just gonna use data I already know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's it, we're all wired up. I mounted the divider, attached those magnetic cosmetic panels, and now there's only one step left to do. If you're a stoic macho manly man who's never experienced strong emotions, you may not be prepared for what's about to happen. Have your cardiologist on speed dial, because this is going straight to your heart. I screwed in my very finest 0.25 millimeter nozzle, I loaded up some flexible TPU, and I printed the world's smallest cable combs, only two and a half millimeters thick. It took hours of tweezing, but I routed those wires into the smallest, cutest cable raceway on YouTube. Oh, oh my God. It must contain the cuteness long enough to mount the back window and the front window. I just, I can't take it anymore. It's all just so cute. Say hello to the Cockalith, the adorable miniature baby of the fire-breathing Megalith that is editing this very video. Just like its mama, no detail has been overlooked to make the Cockalith the ultimate pint-sized gaming machine. Let's hoist it to the tiny table, hook up the tiny peripherals, and what's this? Oh no, the tiny backplane! Well, we built a tiny gaming battle station. What do you say we do some tiny gaming? First on the tiny agenda is Minecraft. This comes pre-installed, so if it doesn't run, I'm, I'm gonna be flabbergasted. Woohoo! Minecraft Pi runs buttery smooth, and although we can mine, uh, this does not let us craft. 
What we can do is use Python to instance 400 blocks of TNT and set them off with a bow and arrow. I'm gonna grab a snack. This could take a few minutes. Raspberry Pi is gonna look like an ashtray when this is done. After the dust settles, we've blown out a cavern the size of your mom. Zing! Next question, does it run Doom? The port is called Chocolate Doom uh, because it is not Vanilla Doom. We launch our wad and there we go, We're kicking demon butt Carmack style. I regret not making a set of tiny speakers to play the tiny Pantera covers, but then I'd be worried about getting a tiny copyright strike. Last challenge is gonna be the hardest. Can it play Crisis? I installed Play on Linux, I loaded Wine, and guess what? My SD card is eight gigabytes, but Crisis is seven. That is the stupidest reason something can't run Crisis ever. So the best thing I can do is use Steam Link to stream gameplay from the Megalith. It does actually work and it's responsive enough to play, but for some reason, uh, it's the, the picture is upside down. Uh, so, will it run Crisis as of now? No. Will it play Crisis? Absolutely. Technically correct. The very best kind of correct. And that is all about my tiny computer. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving the Fat Cat Fab Lab a small donation or apply for a sponsored membership. Links to both are in the description. Wanna build your own itsy bitsy teeny weeny 3D printed Raspi PC? Links to STLs are down there below. If you've made it this far, you may be interested in the official Void Star Lab Discord coming soon to a full size chat program near you. Hit subscribe to stay in touch. Mash that bell to get sucked back into this rabbit hole in a later date. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the future.